Hey everybody, welcome back to part three of episode seven, Dynamic Communication of our 13-part leadership series where we left off was on the topic called building rapport. So when you're communicating with other people, you want to build rapport, you want to have a connection with them so that they feel comfortable with you, you feel comfortable with them, whether you've worked with them for years, whether they're in your family, whether they're in a relationship with you, whether you're trying to win their business as a client, you want to build rapport. So <clears throat> write down areas where it's important to build rapport for you in, at home, at work, with family, etc. And then in the next section, write that intuitive listening can help me build rapport by doing what? So write the things that you think that hearing between the lines and helping forward the action uh, with other people can help you by building rapport. And then what are the steps you're going to take to become an intuitive listener in terms of building rapport? And so let's do that in terms of getting buy-in and resolving conflict. Write down in, in terms of getting buy-in what areas are important for your current situation to get buy-in when you're communicating with people like, oh, I want to ask my boss for a raise. I need to get my boss to buy into that. How can I do that? Right? First of all, asking my boss for a raise to get buy-in. That's an area that's important. How can intuitive listening help you get buy-in? You can listen to your boss on a day-to-day -day basis and you can say, okay, based on how my boss is, how can I listen to my boss intuitively so I understand how my boss acts and reacts to different things and how my boss might act and react to me asking for a raise. And then what are additional steps that I can take to become an intuitive listener in those areas? After that, with resolving conflict, you might have conflict at work, at home, wherever you end up trying to build a business. You might have conflict with people in traffic. And in terms of resolving conflict, what areas are important to you so that you can resolve conflict with your communication and your listening, most importantly? How can intuitive listening help you resolve that conflict? So write that down and then answer that. And then write, what additional steps am I going to take to become an intuitive listener? And so being an intuitive listener is not easy. Sometimes you might think you're intuiting something right and then you give pers a person feedback and you say, oh, it seems like you're feeling upset. No, I'm not feeling upset. So you misread it. So practice more and then learn how to become an intuitive listener so that you can add value to the people that you're listening to and let them really know that you're hearing them. You're also feeling where they're coming from and you're willing to forward the action of helping them move the needle in terms of progress and success and fulfillment. So let's talk about a topic that a lot of people don't necessarily like to talk about in terms of communication, which is public speaking. Like people will say, oh, the two biggest fears in being a human being are death and public speaking. And that may or may not be true. But let's find out what are your thoughts and feelings and behaviors with regard to yourself in terms of public speaking. Are you a go-getter? Like, for example, if I know I had to speak about something, I would want to do, for example, like this video. I'm being a public speaker on this video. I want to have my notes. I want to have my system. I want to study a little bit and get my rhythm going so that I have a flow that's customary to me. If I was an introvert, I'm going to have to do a lot of different things to get myself into public speaking. So write down for yourself, you know, are you extroverted? Are you introverted? Are you a go-getter? Are you shy? Are you lost for words? Are you the person who can talk off the cuff and do it? Because certain people are certain different aspects of public speaking, whether they be highly energized creators or really afraid and no, I'm never going to do that. You can't even, you can't even pay me to do that. But after completing the above question, you can... Talk to me if you're having trouble figuring that out and saying, well, I don't know if this is applicable or not. Let me know. And it's all applicable because it's all part of your communication. What comes out of your mouth and what goes into your ears. And remember, somebody taught me this and I'm still learning because it's not like I listen very well all the time. But I do, especially when I'm working as a coach, because that's my job is to listen to you non-judgmentally, to have two ears and to have one mouth. So I listen twice as much or more than I speak. And when I coach, I don't speak this much. I don't teach you lessons. I let you teach me the lesson. I let you hold yourself accountable. And by being a dynamic communicator, we'll both realize, hey, we're both getting the most out of each other's energy and I win as a client and Francis wins as a coach because we're both getting the things that serve us. Next question, what happens as a result of your current energy level and how is this consistent with what you're learning about dynamic communication in relation to public speaking? So let's say your current energy level in communicating is like a four, you're compassionate, but for public speaking, you're like a one, like I'm never going to do that. So what happens with your current energy level and how is it consistent with what you're learning with dynamic communication? Like what are you learning here so that you can realize, oh, I can up my energy level. I can look at it this way instead of that way. And then I can go out there with a different attitude and a different approach. 
So if you could change three things about your public speaking, what would they be? And list those things. Now we're going to talk about the impact of your message. So this is kind of brief. But realize that when you're giving your message to people, 7%, seven, seven not 70, 7% seven of the time they're paying attention to your words. They're paying attention to what you say. 38% of the time they're listening to how you're saying it, the sound of your voice, the tone of your voice. And 55% of what you're saying is conveyed in your body language. So again, like if I'm over here, oh, I'm so excited to go to the amusement park. That doesn't show excitement. That's BS. That's like, yeah, right. You're not excited. You're in some other world, but excitement's not the world unless that's your version of excitement, which may, may or may not be, which is kind of weird. But so think about that as the impact of your communication. Now write down in your notebook again two columns and make sure the column's long enough because we're going to talk about the top part and then we'll talk about the bottom part. The bottom part's about you. The top part is about... Uh, how you see catabolic speakers and anabolic speakers. So on, you're gonna have two columns. On the top of one column, put catabolic speaker. If you are being a catabolic speaker, what is your tone of voice? How does it sound? Is it loud and angry? Is it really timid and really afraid? And then what's the delivery? Are you shouting and raising your arms and acting crazy because you're angry? Are you afraid and your arms are crossed and your body language is closed and you're not, you know, so define for fear and anger, what is the tone of voice and the delivery of that catabolic speaker? On the other side is the anabolic speaker, so it could be anything. It could be forgiveness, forgiveness compassion, peace, joy, creation. What tone of voice are they speaking in? And So pick one. You can pick all the energy levels if you want to really work through it and say, oh, this is what I think I know so far, and that's perfect. Excuse me, because that's all you need to know. If you have any questions like, oh, if I want to be level six, what tone of voice could I be talking in? You know, you could be talking in a competent tone of voice. Your posture for delivery would be upright, very attentive. You'd be thinking winning is happening all the time. And in my voice, you hear clearness, you hear conciseness, you hear confidence, and you hear self-assured. So those are some of the things that you might hear at level six. Now, remember I said write two columns below that. And on the left side, write what is the energy level on the right side, right, voice. So what's the energy level of your voice? And then what's your energy level of your delivery? So write that so that you can measure yourself. And then you can say, am I being anabolic or catabolic when publicly speaking? And neither is good or bad. It just gives you an opportunity to see where you are and where you might want to grow. So energy, voice, and delivery are interrelated. Shifting your energy can change your voice and delivery. Higher energy levels can lead to a more energetic voice and relaxed posture. Changing your voice or delivery can shift your energy. For example, taking a deep breath and standing tall can improve the tone of your voice and make you feel more confident, more optimistic, and more open to the moment. So those are some ideas to get you started on, okay, where am I? Where could I be? Where do I want to go? Another opportunity to work with me, like I said, if you want to message me or contact me, through the DMs or get on my calendar, feel free and ask me so that we can work on energy, voice and delivery of your message. Another question to ask yourself, what will it take to implement these desired changes? For example, what resources will it take for me to be a public speaker or to communicate dynamically and to be a great listener? And what assistance do I need? Do I need a coach? You may or may not. Do I need somebody to be accountable to? Definitely have somebody to be accountable to because then you can test things out. Like if you have a best friend and you say, hey, you know what? I'm taking this course and I'm learning about communication. And, you know, you can say to them, give me your opinion about how I communicate. And I'm sure they will because they're your friend. And I'm sure you'll stay friends anyway because then you'll start to learn. Oh, that's how I communicate? I didn't even know that. Or, yeah, that's me. Okay. And here's what I'm trying to learn is my opportunity. What skills um, can you take on to implement so that you can become an ideal dynamic communicator? What behaviors and practices can you take on to do that? And again, like I said, I'd like to thank you for being in this training. You always have the opportunity to contact me here on Instagram and to check out what I do on my website, francisxwilliams.com and see who I serve, how I help. You can check out testimonials there. You can see the coaching school that I went to. If you feel like, oh, Francis has a lot of great stuff to say, but he's a man, I want to be coached by a woman, check out that website because it's a website that's a repository of other coaches that do very similar work to what I do. They might be, you might want somebody local to your region. So check out where in your region you might find a coach, whether you want to work with them in person um, given the restrictions, that may or may not be a thing, um, whether or not you want to work with them directly, whether or not they know the local customs and culture of your environment, and that might help you as well. 
So give it a whirl so that you get the most out of it that you can. And I'll get the benefit out of sharing that with you by getting clients however I get clients, whether that's you or whether that's somebody else that sees us or somebody you refer or by some other miracle. And so I'd like to introduce episode eight, which is coming up in a couple of days. It's called Influencing Others. And we're going to learn how you use your energy or misuse your energy, how to influence others anabolically, how when you're catabolic that influences or doesn't or de-influences other people and go from there. So love to see likes, comments and shares and hear what you're thinking about with the training. I want to know if if and how this is helping you. I also want to know if I left anything out that you think might be important or if you want me to elaborate on anything, feel free to contact me. So talk to you soon. Hope you're having a great rest of the day and take care. Bye.